Hey there, and welcome back to Off the Rails, an educational monster train series where we explore content mods for the game to shake things up. I'll have you know, this is the fourth time I have recorded that intro. I kept calling this series the train of thought. I kept going, hey there, and welcome back to the train of thought, and then going, ugh, it's not the train of thought. So, uh, well, I finally got it right. And then I sussed up and admitted to it anyway, so whatever. I am recording with some tea. I have found that that's been very helpful for me today after a really nasty migraine. So that's nice. And yeah, I'm ready for some Monster Train. Today we are playing the unofficial balance patch. Ye old patch that I get to make for myself and for anyone else who wants to play it. So that's always exciting. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we're kind of continuing on with playing through this run series. I, I suppose I'll mention this. I think I am based on the response from the previous videos. I think I am going to play at least one run a week of a 200 shard run. And there's no small reason. There's no small part of that decision that comes from the fact that someone gave me a really good name for the series. And if you read the comments, you know what it is. But I'm not going to spoil it otherwise, because that first episode is going to look good with that title. I'm looking forward to that. So I think I will be doing that. I am i don't want to give up the modded series altogether, especially because I think I do have some fun ideas for upcoming mod series, right? I want to run Mono Clan and just suffer through Umbra. There's a unique level of hell designed for the person that plays and enjoys Umbra Umbra. So that's exciting. Is it, you know, I maybe someone has actually played that mod. I've never played it. Is it like Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter? Or do I get both of the cards? Is it like Shade Splitter, Plink? Because that might actually be better, right? I could use Plinks to kill enemies and then Shade Splitter gives me morsels. It's not terrible. That's interesting because then a lot of these are really weird, right? I mean, Awoken is really good. Oh, that's kind of fun. I definitely want to play that. And that's the interesting thing about that is depending on which champion it gives you, I think I will get 12 runs. I'm not sure if you get both or how the heck that works. So I don't know. That sounds like a fun little adventure, though. So we'll do that. But otherwise, we're just kind of continuing on now. We just finished Chief. Yeah, Chief. That was a good run. I think that was probably a really solid test run of how I feel overall about the Keeper of Echoes infusion change. That felt really good. It felt punishing and difficult to play with the three cost on it, but at the same time, it felt rewarding. I really did like that. And I like cards that are hard to play but rewarding, so you've solved the challenge of the run in some means, in some way. And as a result, you reap the rewards, right? I have solved the ember problem of a three space, of a three ember unit, not rather. And because I can overstack the floor, I am rewarded. I am able to get super scaling, which is good. So I think that was awesome. We are moving on to the queen, which is always exciting. So she's fine. There are a few things I would still like to test here. There's some balanced discussions I think I'd still like to have. So we'll see what we're shown and hopefully make a win out of it, but maybe not. Uh, I guess we're on a win, one win streak, right? So that's fine. Very fun. Hooray. I, I really feel like this series, not this series in total, but like this 12 run pack has been pretty brutal to me so far. I've lost a couple. That Penumbra run was really rough, but I haven't been able to hold a very long win streak here. But it's interesting because we're trying new things and we're seeing if it works. Speaking of that Penumbra run, I think I am going to unnerf Siren of the Sea. Now you might, let's see. So if we go in the logbook, I think I can show you that here. Yeah, I totally can. So if we go to Stygian, I go to Units, Uncommon, Siren of the Sea. She's plus two, plus one. This is a nerf from pre-DLC that I never adjusted walking into The Last Divinity. And I think, I think the truth is that this should be unnerfed. I think Incant Lines need the health scaling on Siren of the Sea in a DLC world. 
yes. Let me know what you think of that. If you have an opinion on the unnerf of Siren of the Sea, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning that direction. I have it in my notes as a to-do. And yeah, so fair enough. I'm probably not going to get to a new patch of this for a good long while. Not like a terribly long amount of time, but I've been working on some recording things that I want to do. And generally, I really want to get my D&D campaign in a good space. So I'm spending a lot of time on that. I don't think I have a ton of time for programming right now, but... Uh, that's fine because my plan is to collect a lot of feedback here and then ultimately decide on those changes. Uh, we've been having some good discussions in the Discord, right? The Discord server for the channel, which is kind of fun. We've got a little bit of community going on there. Some people having opinions, which I like to see. I'm glad to see it. And some thoughts there have come up. And I think there's a general agreement. So, but yeah, fair enough. So I guess I mentioned, if you haven't already joined the Discord, you're welcome to do so. It's in the top right of the screen. I'm not putting it into every single YouTube video's description because that feels kind of overbearing. But it's on my channel. You can see it in my banner. It's a little hidden in the top right, but it is there. So, yeah, I think that's actually all I've got for you. Surprising amount of talking at the beginning of this episode. Sorry, maybe not sorry. I don't know. I guess you maybe listen to me to hear me talk, but whatever. <laughs> I think that's everything I've got for you. We are playing Queen with Random 25. We have the mod turned on, which is great news. So yeah, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, let's send it. Queen it is. All right. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing okay. T has been helping me all day long. I've been feeling a little better since going crazy with it so i've been sticking with it i didn't even finish my coffee either i just kind of stopped having it i was like no the caffeine's not sitting well with me today and tea was just a better choice so anyway uh, i suppose we'll get in on this run today we are exile hellhorned default of melting and putting with with dregs sadly not primitive molds this is potentially a really good rally start right we have all units all the time we're fighting Rage Talos, Curse Arcus, and Diligent Seraph. Oh god, Diligent Seraph, and I have Dregs and Queen Zimplings. Ooh. Well, I suppose if I go all units, it won't matter if I have no spells. Meh, yeah, fair enough. Our other starting cards are Fortify, Purifying Cleanse, and Tiresome Climb. A good set of cards. I'm a little concerned about Diligent. Let's look ahead, though. See what we see. Hellhorn Banner with that Steel Shop. Remnant Banner with the Merchant of Magic. So some flexibility here is nice. Ring to Temple. Hard to take advantage of that Temple unless we see a really good card or a unit trial from Ring 1. I don't love starting with the Horde here, but it's fine, I suppose. I like the money a lot. Ring 3 is Horde in the middle. Hellhorn Banner, Horde on the right. Hellvent, Pyre remains on the left. It's fine. I don't know. We'll see what we see, I suppose. Temples on four, five, seven, and two monies on six and eight. We love money. Let's see anything else good? Removal dupe on eight is nice to see. With the steel side, it's a very strong lineup. Yeah, we'd like to see that. So we'll try to take advantage of that. Other dupes are five and three. We already saw that one. Steel Shop situation says, let's see, Steel Shop on four and six and seven and eight, of course. So a lot of Steel Shops. This is a pretty good one. I don't want to say it's amazing. It's fine. There are ways you could improve this, right? A Ring 8 Temple, maybe some other hordes here instead of the, instead of the Boons late game. Yeah, maybe another early Steel Shop. I don't know. I think it's fine. Let's look at that horde, see what we get. Votive key. Votive key with imps means that imperialist is nutty. Although capricious reflection is fun. You could just see, I don't know, endless in a unit. I don't know. I oh, It's tough. Votive key plus dregs, though. I mean, votive key plus imps is nuts. I think we should grab this. There's no reason to skip that. Yeah, all right, fine. Dark Forge says, no, oh, no imperialist. And because we have the votive key, Imp Parade makes no sense. So I suppose it is chump blocker royalty time. 
Yeah, sure. I'm actually glad to be playing royalty a lot here with that multi-strike set up on it. And we do not take this horde. I have no access to the back line outside of what? Tiresome climb? Yeah, no, we move on. So that's kind of nice. I actually quite like that we're getting to really trial run the royalty line. I take this unit trial, we're good. We'll put the Endless into the Queen first and then Elevator her and she should be very strong. Yeah. Dreg comes down, that's good. Brain Steward comes down, that's good. And then we Tiresome Climb. I guess we play the Train Steward middle. No reason not to, I suppose. I thought about the Tiresome Climb. It's fine. Okay, so now it's Queen Simpling with Endless. Good. It is a Dreg, I think. Six, nine, nine. Hmm, I could put the train steward in front and it serves a similar purpose, right? Six, nine on the train steward and then nine here and we save the queen. Yeah, and then that lets us do the queen simpling middle, which gives us the collector, which I value a lot. And we'll just play out the drag here. It's fine. Sure, dude, sure. We're good. Cool, and now we get this extra Queen Zempling on every floor. Nicely done. I'll play a Train Steward. We do kill a unit on middle, which is good. Armor, armor. If I put an armor front, we get another round. Yeah, dude. Five, nine, and then five, nine. We get a kill, of course we do. I mean, the math works out, right? But we could have elevated the queen anyway, so it didn't really matter all that much. Yeah, that worked out well. Funk. Cool. Now, hopefully I see a better imp. Rage imp? Oh, wow. I have my selection. It is, of course, rage imp. Absolutely. Outload halls in my basic clan pack. What the heck? I mean, Molded is actually better, right? I don't want to yeet my queen. Plus, it creates weird things with the... Yeah, I don't want to yeet the queen. And it creates a lot of weird scenarios with my... Uh, what is it? Votive Key, right? If I didn't have the Votive Key, I might snap the three-cost Hallowed Halls here. But I think it is just Molded. It's just better. Oh, wow. Consumer of crowns. Yeah, dog. You all get the... Yeah, I mean... Heck yeah, consumer of crowns. He costs two. He's modded. He says... He says, slay. Gain multi-strike one. It's pretty good. He also says, costs minus one ember per imp unit in your deck. And he's eight cost. Well, it turns out I have six imps in my deck. Get in here, consumer buddy. Oh, friends. Oh, we're happy about that. I haven't played him in a while. He got nerfed in the last one. I, I reduced, in the last patch, I reduced his base attack so he doesn't get the slays as easily. And I reduced his HP because he's more of a backline now. So, that's fun. We take, we go to the right. Oh, Endless into my Rage Imp is great news. It means I no longer am reliant on the Votive Key, which is good. I will look at the Hellhorn banner. Demon Fiend Horned Warrior. Hmm. Nyeh, meh, nyeh. Ma, meh, nyeh. Ah, ugh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, we'll pass on these. It's fine. I will buy the Endless. I think that is correct. Yeah, Endless, good. We like Endless. Plus 30 and an Intrinsic, huh? Ah, you could do something like Intrinsic on, I don't know, Tiresome Climb for the Divinity. You know, the weird thing is, this Queen is more of a backline. 
and so is consumer. So maybe I made a bad play here. I maybe should have considered the steel worker there. But it's just so hard to pass up the cool rare unit I barely get to play. Right? I mean, it's so it's so rare. Right? I, I'm playing the mod only so much, and then they show me a consumer of crowns. It's really fun to pick that. Maybe I give him 25 life here? I don't know. He doesn't really need multi-strike. He kind of does. He wants to kill a unit, though. But I have rage to help. I do have rage to help. Hmm. Interesting choices all around. What do I infuse? Anything? Queen Zimpling? Rage? Nah, it's fine. I think we chill. I'm interested in seeing a burnout one for my imp. Yeah, we'll move on. We're in a good spot. I can still do the shenanigans with elevatoring the queen here. I will take the unit, I mean, the invasion trial here for money. I'm definitely trading here, but I think it's okay, right? It's just fine. How do I approach this? Because the Slayer of uh, Slayer, the Consumer of Crowns does not keep its multi-strike if it dies and comes back with Endless. So what I would prefer to do is to train Steward Consumer up top. And then what? Queen just dies and gets replayed next turn? Kind of an odd decision, but I think it's correct. She needs the Endless here then. And we play our bottom. Yeah. I put the train steward up top with the ember drain. And then consumer gets rolling upstairs. Gets that slay trigger. We take six. I now need to chump for two different units, which kind of sucks a little bit. I don't care about that queen. She can die. We're going to queen zumbling upstairs. Bonk. We're going to Queen Zimpling upstairs. I think that's also a bonk. If I play this Queen Zimpling in the back, we get the Collector. Yeah, and then I give it a Purifying Cleanse here, and I put Dreg, Dreg downstairs for some scaling. Good. And now the purifying cleanse up there does mean that thing burns out, which is good. We put a queen zimpling upstairs, I believe, just to face tank that a little bit. I then give it armor, and it takes that whole round, and we just lay units, right? I mean, he's going to slam. He gets three slays here, so I don't need to worry about it. I just need to respect. Yeah, cool. He punches out everything. Good job. We just need one round, basically. So uh, you do this by... What? If I ascend to the boss, it doesn't work because this Queen Zimpling is in the way. So... I think it is... We absorb the Endless with the Rage Imp here. Yeah. And then we Queen Zimpling... Queen Zimpling. And she doesn't get a shot, but I do get to replay her. Yeah. Yeah, she gets no shots. But that's okay. We... We move her up, and I want Rage Imp here. I don't even think she swings. No, she doesn't. It's fine. Cool. I mean, of course we win, but of course we win. I guess we, we tank with the queen, <laughs> I suppose. It's fine, right? He just beats the actual hell out of that because I've gotten him so many slays. Yeah, all right, cool. That was good. Another Rage Imp, self-infused now, is kind of the play I'm seeing. Sure, I like that. Wicklash, Purifying Cleanse. I'll take the Hallow Drippings because it's armor 5. It's fine, I think. 
a dupe is no longer required here. Also, the extra imp, I guess, makes the consumer of crowns cheaper. I'll go to the right because maybe I see a good infusion for the consumer. Yeah. Horde says, eh, exploding candle. Although, Hell's Banners is going to be just free ember forever. Yeah, we take that. That's ember forever. Banner says, Steelworker. That's pretty darn good. You could do Railbeater, right? And then he slays off the back of that action trigger that gives things... What is it? It gives things the melee weakness. But I actually just genuinely think the Steelworker is stronger here. Cool. I'll take the Horde. Sure. Impsicle? That is an obnoxious... Oh, that is obnoxious. I mean, of course I click Impsicle. I have Hell's Banners. I mean, this run is this run is off the rails. It genuinely is. Like, I wish I was playing this on the base game, but it's pretty cool right now, as is. One Horn's Tome. You ever just give Trample Stone to Consumer here? <laughs> uh, I mean, we click Umbra Stone. Okay, sure. That seems good. I think that our Talos looks similar to our Ring 2, as long as I can keep our dude alive. So, Queen, of course, still elevators. Yep, we play the Steelworker in front, and I'm going to put the Queen Zimpling in front here. It keeps things alive. She gets slays here, right? It's true. So, what I should do is I trade what? 25 armor for 18 damage and getting rid of these units. It's not bad, right? I should probably do it. So I trade, what, 7? It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Ooh, Molting Imp is very good here. Yes, so the plan then is Molting Imp with Endless... Because it keeps everything good, we play Consumer up top. We give him the Umbra Stone. I play a Dreg Middle. And I guess we play the Fledgling Imp here. Imp Gang, rise up. Sure. Seems okay. Armor upstairs for sure. I will play. I guess we keep endlessing this imp, right? There's no reason not to. I am going to heal Mr. Steelworker, even though he gets burnout because I might as well. And I don't play these other cards. Fine. This is also good because it leaves one enemy going upstairs. Armor up top. We do play the Molting Imp downstairs, I believe. It's a good Molting Imp, right? I think it's actually better to Queen Zimpling here. So who gets the Endless, right? I will Fledgling Imp upstairs, I believe. The Rage goes there. So... What? I guess I just endless the imp I already have endless on, right? There's no reason not to do that. We get the higher chomper killed middle, and I play the queen zimpling bottom, which I guess I'll play the molting imp. It is it does keep everything alive, right? So I should do that. Fine. We do get a slay, which I appreciate. I guess I can Hallow Drippings downstairs and save the Steelworker. Sure. It's pretty good. Ah, uh, yes. We get the Fledgling Imp upstairs with the Endless. Good job. I suppose I could have Welder Helpered, but it would have been really difficult to get that killed, huh? It's fine. Our bottom floor is looking pretty good here. True. Bottom floor actually looks really good, especially if I play this fledgling imp. Oh yeah, we just it just kills. Actually. It genuinely just kills the bad man. Good job. Go team. Cool. 
Kind of an interesting play up. I guess I could theoretically take space here and then put Steelworker into our friend, Consumer. It's pretty good, actually, right? And then we just frontline with Consumer here. It's kind of a weird choice, but I like it. Dark Deal? I guess I never took a ping. I didn't. So we click Dark Deal. It's a good ping. And it's also offense if I want to. Oh, Alpha Fiend, you're too late, man. You're too late, bud. I wish. I wish. I already have the Steelworker. We take space. Yeah, all right, fine. I think we're good here, right? Sure. Space. Yes. We go to the steel shop here for sure. Yep. Let's look at the steel shop. Endless again. It's a shame that it's another endless. I've already seen the one. It is. Where are you? Steel worker into consumer. Good. Dark Forge says imp parade sadly is not what I want. I'll take the rally plus. 10, I suppose. I'm looking for an Imperialist if I don't see the Burnout 1. Yeah, I think so. I think I will put a plus 25 in Consumer here. <laughs> right? It's fine. Give him some HP. He's becoming like a big steel worker in this run, which is good. Sure. I'll reroll it. Quick. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty good. If I can get him a kill, he kind of pops off. And I can use the rage to get him a kill. That's a good quick for him, huh? Sure, friend. We'll see how this plays. Still no burnout one, by the way. Removals are train stewards. I want to keep the imps to make my dudes free or cheaper. And this remnant banner is just money. Yeah. There was an argument potentially for the tycoon there but i don't i don't believe that's it spell chain tenon piercing nope 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 we move on i'll save my cash magic shop is hilarious i think i go to the dupe yeah i think i go to the dupe and look for what <laughs> i don't know man maybe i dupe the imp after i've infused it Maybe. We'll move on. 40 is respectable here. I think we're fine because I've taken a defensive option to balance out. We'll take the Mark of Invasion here for sure. We get the three hits no matter what. Right? I mean, you look at this floor. You get Queen, Endless. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Impsicle makes my consumer even cheaper. Genius. We do Queen. We do Steel worker buddy. He bonk bonk. I Queen Zimpling for some scaling. It saves some life, right? Because he bonks once, it kills the Queen Zimpling. Everyone gets plus five now. And so I think it's just correct to le leave the Psychophants on middle. And I'll play a molting him downstairs. And we're chilling. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Look at that. Dark deal. Give me the collector. Absolutely. Queen Zimpling, we bonk once, and it looks very similar to before, right? You endless on that Queen Zimpling. The consumer hits twice, clears. Yeah, we're chilling. You ever play another Transcend Imp here? No. No, no, no. It's not good. Not yet, anyway. We already cleared the whole floor. It's fine. Cool. Great news. It is time for... For what? I'm at the point where the imps aren't going to be able to die upstairs. So what is actually the play? I'm going to endless the molting of downstairs because I do not want to deal with those curses. True. He goes bonk, bonk. So if I ascend the back line here, I think we get an extra bonk. The bonketing. True. 
cool. He's going mad with power here. Armor up. We rage him. Well, I mean, it, it's tough because this rage imp doesn't work, actually. So we go downstairs, we endless and molting imp again, and we imp gang rise up down here. Seems reasonable. <laughs> he just baseball bats. I love that. And then you take the Umbra Stone and it's kind of like whatever's happening. Who even really knows? But it's fine. Yeah, just baseball bat him, but it's fine. I took a lot of curses here, didn't I? It's fine. It's fine. We just don't play cards, right? With any luck, some of these get killed by the other dudes. Yeah, it's actually, it's only... You know what? Fire Chomper. I don't know what any of you were talking about. Fire Chomper. Look, it was never a concern. Fire Chomper. The game is so easy. He's really doing it to him. He's really... Oh, the queen got the kill. Dang, all right. Consumer of crowns. Important work. It kills an imp. Let's go. What am I doing? Crushing Demise? I mean, I guess that kills an imp, right? <laughs> no, we don't take that. Sacred Wicks? I don't want to bring back these imps. We create more with Imp Sickle. So... We skip? Unless I'm trying to take spells to offset Diligent. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'd have to take ten spells? I mean, Crushing Demise is really good no matter what. I should grab this. Yeah, I will. Fine. I need card draw. What am I duping if I dupe anything? Probably nothing. Unless I want to dupe that imp. I think removals are better. But what am I doing at the magic shop? I mean, that's a good question, right? What am I doing on the left, though, if I do this dupe? I mean, it, it, there's no value here whatsoever. Caverns, maybe. I mean, maybe there's an overflow, but <laughs> give me that melee weakness. That sweet, sweet melee weakness. <laughs> that seems silly. Vortex. I'd like to remove these train stewards, I think. The pyre health is fine. I'm going to go to the right. I think it's a more secure choice for sure. Yeah, we removed the two train stewards that are left. It's fine. This is guaranteed value. I don't have to wait around and hope for imp or whatever. Minus one. I mean, you're going to make me pick. I'm going to minus one double stack tiresome climb because it's big value into the divinity. I suppose I should look at the temple, right? It could be a minus two. It's not, but it could have been. It sure could have been. Do I have a spell chain? spell chain important work this again depends on whatever comes out of this merchant of magic so we're gonna minus one the crushing demise first i always want to play this when i see it pretty much i don't think i 20 and consume here double stack on that tiresome climb is pretty good Pretty good to take my four days please yeah sure we'll re-roll it's not a holdover, sadly. Fine. Take that minus one into Tiresome Climb. Probably. Yeah, probably. It's here, right? I'm going to spell chain the important work. I think this is really strong. Obviously not in a diligent, but we probably deal with diligent fine. Otherwise, I will infuse imp into imp. Big rage scaling, please, and thank you. Sure. Fine, going to 80 here. It's a little disrespectful. Just a little. I should buy a removal. I guess I'm going to this Merchant of Steel, looking for a Burnout 1 still, please, video game. So, that's fine. Dregs are worse than imps because the imp I get on turn one, thanks to Impsicle, makes my consumer cost one. 
Dregs don't do anything good for me otherwise. Yeah, that's a true statement. Okay. We move on. 80 shards. That was a big jump. I think it's fine. As long as I can get consumer going. Man, this heaven seal. I think it's okay. Think so? I mean, there's one way it's not. We didn't we didn't see that one way. Huh. The thing is, Queen has to go first, right? So it's a little awkward, but we do what? Queen consumer fledgling him self-infused and then we dark deal it and then I fledgling him downstairs to get killed we crushing demise you know it's fine I air chomper armor upstairs I definitely want to umbra stone him I wish to fledgling imp here. Tough, right? It is tough. I would like very much for the imp to die. So we will get the imp killed, I suppose. Sure. And that leaves burnout into the pyre chomper. I don't need the ember here. I lose the collector, sadly. Oh, this is a great turn, huh? Yeah, we do Fledgling Imp here. I do important work into Fledgling Imp. We do Fledgling Imp. I do important work into Fledgling Imp. And now Consumer gets a Slay. And we just get some dudes killed, I suppose. Sure, dude. I know I'm feeding that thing, but it, it should be okay, right? We'll have this addressed in time. Ooh, actually, there is an extinguish trigger here, so this fledgling imp upstairs is big brain. I can technically save. Well, no, it doesn't work. We, I don't know, imp gang rise up, I guess. Fine. Sure. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're making good progress. I am getting the kills I require. There's another extinguish trigger, which is great news. We take the imp upstairs then. I suppose we'll take the hollow drippings first and then get the imp killed. Good. Good. You like to see that. Sure, cool. The trample helps a lot, right? Because he just kind of cleaves everything out. Oh yeah, and we actually tire some climb harpy here and the run is over. Cool. And we molded back a, what? A welder helper, and we give that endless. Cool. Because now it burns out, which is very good. And then, I mean, of course, we have an obscene amount of HP here, right? Just truly, we are obscene. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's trample, quick, multi. As long as I can get him going, he just bodies things fate's first blade is funny i mean i'll take it why not it's fine you know impressive man i'll take it it's a card that kills an imp we need to kill imps votivary would be really good but i have the imp instead so i don't care i mean memories of the melted kills an imp sure actually it kills an imp great news we go to the steel shop looking for burnout one. Please bless up for me. Never lucky. We re-roll looking for it. I mean, third endless in the run. Disgusting. A disgusting. I'm not even going to keep looking. I will offer health here to the Thousand Eye Cave. Firestone housing. Yeah, okay. You, you got my attention, bud. What's in here? Suddenly, I am interested in looking for another steel shop. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, yes, I think I will hunt for the burnout one, actually. I'm going to chill on these shards, though. Yeah. Okay. Do we beat Arcus? Probably. 
Probably. I think we're in a good spot. Right? What is this a rally shard? That's unfortunate. I do want to set up top, though. Do I? Nah. Alright, so... I think the right play is to endless the queen here for two reasons. One, obviously, the consumer then procs her rally, but two, the consumer loses all of his quick, I mean, all of his multi-strike on the endless when he gets elevator, whereas she still punches twice. So we'll do that. We'll do queen, I'll do consumer, and I will put the fledgling imp in front so it gets shot. Perfect, I'll take the trample and i will purify and cleanse the m good job the, the the trample here is nuts we do the memories of the melted to kill a unit awesome i do molded to bring back that fledgling imp and we give this fledgling imp endless and the run is super done skis right sure i'll daze the Arcus, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, when you do this, this is over, right? Like, we hold on the Endless here because I wish to Fledgling Imp off war. It dies. I don't want to trigger the Rally Shard, basically. And then, I don't know. Nothing matters. I do Welder Helper upstairs, and then I kill it. Sure. Seems okay. Yeah, we're, we're in a good spot, I think, basically. Like this turn, look at this. So, you do Fledgling Imp. Oh, I can't do this because it loses the Endless on death. Ah, so I need to have the other Imp for this good turn. This good, good turn. That's fine, right? That's fine. I will kill this Imp then, which does redraw it. And that's fine. Oh, we get the good imp now. So it's actually just free. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Turns out trample is good. Ooh, how do I want to approach this? I think it is welder helper with the endless. I dark deal it to death. And then what? I don't even play this man. I guess I will anyway. There's no reason not to. Oh no. I have succumbed to the blinding dark shard. Whatever will I do? Kill my imp, please. Coward video game. I can't kill my imps. They're too strong. Well, <laughs> sure. I mean, he. <laughs> Alright, we're good. We're good. We did a... Uh... How much? 1,500? Sure. Quick trample, 5 million multi... It's, it's over. <laughs> he just baseball bats it all to death. Uh, well, that's good. Is Transcend Imp a good card here? Debatable. I mean, you click Transcend Imp every time. 10 out of 10, you click Transcend Imp here. And what? I take draw? Yeah, draw. Good. Sure. Draw good. Sure, Divine Artifact. Why not? We're taking my 25 gold and I'm happy with it. Okay, so this run feels a bit straightforward. <laughs> We're going to the Steel Shop because I hit that wonderful Pyrestone housing. Board says sketches? No way. No way. Encased Ember? I don't even have a tomb. Well... 25 gold. That's unfortunate. Burnout. One. Unbelievable. Endless in the shop. Number like five. So what do you actually do here? Do I infuse Queen Zimpling into Transcend Imp and we create God Floors? I mean, probably, right? Yeah, actually, this is just better, right? Endless Burnout 1 Transcend Imp, and then we dupe it. That's reasonable. Sure. 
multi-strike to start. Yeah, sure, consumer crowns. I think we're doing well. I go to the removal dupe next, and we go completely ballistic. Make another transcend imp. Yikes. I could e I should even put transcend imp plus, uh, plus HP here, right? Because it burns out in one. So it just tanks the floor. Yeah, great job. Go team. Let's go, bud. All right, we're, we're strong as hell. Imperialist 2. Well, I mean... Imperialist is pretty solid here. Yeet Imp. I, I don't know, actually. Does it really matter? Probably not, but I might as well do this. There are a lot of things this can benefit me with, right? Yeah, I think I will take the Imperialist. Maybe I don't get the... I don't draw my good Imps fast enough. Maybe I don't see another Burnout 1. There's a lot of things that could happen here. Having the extra Imperialist is strong. And truly, what am I afraid of? Not much. Not much. All right, yeah, we'll move on here. Cool. 105 out of 100 going into ring 7. I'm not afraid, though. Yeah, we're fine. It's Heaven Seal. Ah. No fears become one fear. That is an upgraded Gilded Wings. That's going to be a problem because it prevents me. Yeah, it prevents me from successfully. Yeah, I can't actually do anything to it, right? I can't kill it without a lot of scaling. Ooh, this is good. I do Welder Helper. I do Fortify, I do Memories of the Melted for Ember. I then play the Fledgling Imp here with Endless. Very good, very good. We just get units killed, I suppose. Cool. That is also a Slay on the Collector, which is big value. Are we good here? Kind of? Fledgling Imp? Question mark? Oh, yeah, yeah, good enough for me. Sure, we play out randos. No problem. Get rid of imps, please. Yeah, okay. Actually, we we don't get the slays we want on that turn, but it's okay. Ah, transcend him. That'll get you slays, huh? So here we do what? Allegedly, we do what? I don't want to draft other things. We do Fledgling Imp, Queen's Impling. I then play Transcend Imp upstairs for big, big energy. And then we self mutilation here. He goes ballistic. He triple hits here, it looks like. And yeah, Trample is on the floor. No, it's not. Who's killing this then? 146, 146 is... Oh, I guess that is 292, so he gets it all. Okay, well, fine. I'm going to ascend this dude off floor. I guess even if you... Oh, that's weird. You ascend him manually, he gets that Heaven Seal value. Eh, fair enough. I think the Transcendent sets us up for success here. In a big way, right? You just do what? As a big number, huh? We do Rage Imp downstairs, and then I play Transcend Imp upstairs. We play the Mutilation, and then I trample, and we're fine. True. Yeah, and now he cleaves everything. Okay, so... That's good. Also, the Transcend Imp ju does just kind of kill everything as well. So there's also that. Yeah, that's that seems reasonable. Ooh, this is going to be a good turn. Yeah, this is strong. So you do what? How does this even work? I do Queen's Imp, the Transcend Imp Queen's Impling first. Wow. I then play the Fledgling Imp downstairs. And the other one, sure. I then 
we cycle Mr. Transcendent as many times as the game will let us. And that seems like a totally reasonable amount of, I don't know, anything. The question you have to answer, answer for yourself is, what is really the culprit here? What is the strongest part of the run? The fact that I have 425 rage in this transcendent, or the fact that I also have nine multi-strike because I have enabled myself to go mad with power, right? I mean, you just do what? You do transcend him here, right? We then shoot the man. We just, just shoot him. And we play the other transcend him, right? And then, I don't know, it doesn't even matter, right? We're doing how much? How much damage is that? 1,060. 168 times 10 it's like 11 12k damage basically okay well fair fair i'm gonna grab another important work i always have an imp thanks to impsicle sure i know i skipped that pyre chomper maybe i'll regret that but i think impsicle will create me one and i don't need these other units i don't need more sacrifices i think i am good Obviously, Diligent threatens me slightly, but I don't know, whatever. Just get transcend on, I guess. Sure, that seems like a good play. We remove two more dregs because they're bad. Yeah, and I still do like playing my Consumer of Crowns for pretty cheap. True. Let's see, I don't know. Reroll this shop, maybe show me... Well, I don't know. What do you show me here? We're gonna dupe that transcend him, huh? Yeah, buddy. You need to burn out one? Yeah, buddy. Sure, good, great, good job. Here. Well, let's look in the shop first. I'm gonna buy mold braces. It's HP that I do appreciate value for, yeah. I'm gonna re-roll now. Firewall, grindstone, fracting lens, sadly not it. Which then means it's a removal time. We clear all dregs from the deck. Sure. Seems good. Dreg one, last dreg gone. Great news. I'll put a plus 25 in Fledgling Imp to face tank. And we're chilling. Right? I could take the money in the middle for another removal. But into what? It's a great question. What do you kick at this point? Because I like my imps. I like my spells. Yeah, I think we're chilling, actually. I guess I could cut a purifying cleanse, but it might matter in a diligent, maybe. Maybe. Hard to say. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just going to stay low. 120. I don't feel like dealing with more stealth or something stupid. We're going to move on. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. Right. I'm not skipping out on a Pyrestone housing value or something. Nah, we're, we're super cruising. Let's rock. Yeah. 120 out of 100? Yes. Cool. So, I feel like we have all the elements coming together here. We have the Steelworker survivability. We have the Transcendent going completely ballistic. I have Impish Scholar to completely disrespect Diligence effect entirely. Thank you, video game. Yeah, that seems good. So you do Queen Steel Worker. We play Fortify. We then Impish Scholar it back. And we get to play it again. And then I eat an Imp. And then I play a Queen Simply. Seems good to me. We'll take curses, but I have a lot of ember, so I'm not worried. I mean, they also, like I said, just show me a pyre chomper and the run is very easy. I'll even put endless on it for the moment. We do fledgling imp. Check this turn, though, right? You do what? Important work. Play a fledgling imp. We important work. Play a fledgling imp. I did burn that, but it's okay, because... Is there an imp in there? There sure is, because I do sacrifice on this imp. I now go molded into Impish Scholar, which then brings back, you guessed it, 
spell chain important work. Which lets me play Fledgling Imp and another Fledgling Imp for good measure. That seems like a good turn. Yep. Totally reasonable. Now, in this case, I will do Fledgling Imp soaking the Endless here. Important work. Cool. Play it again. I am taking a hit because he rode the floors up, huh? I could have put that in back, but... Yeah. That's fine. Take 15, huh? Yeah. I could have put it in back to save that hit, I suppose. It's okay. I, I kind of disrespected a, a kind of. What are you talking about? I disrespected a lot. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, it stops becoming a concern here, but fine. And then we play Queen's and playing upstairs, and the run becomes... The run becomes new. And then I can do important work, because I consumed that. And I can do it again. Seems good. And then I can do it again. Yeah, that seems reasonable, huh? Sure, buddy, sure. Cool. Alright, well, fair. Fair and balanced run. Sure, friends, let's go. We do get a kill there, at least, which is nice. Let's see. Ah, well, that's very good. We will play Hollow Drippings. I will play Transcend Him. Ooh, we're powerful today. Play another Transcend Him on the middle floor. Sure, dudes, sure. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. We're good now. We stabilized. It's really just a question of getting getting those kills in fast enough that we're okay with the everything, right? I mean, there's just really no contest here. I suppose you play everything else first, right? No reason not to. And then we, what? Transcend him. Yeet value. Transcend him. Value. I'm just getting this hollow drippings back every turn now. Seems reasonable. Sure. He ya indeed. Finally draw that umber stone. I mean, you do what? Transcendent bottom floor. And then we do another transcendent here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And then what? I don't know. I ascend one dude, sure. Here, have some more rage, I guess. Seems okay. Get a imp. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, what's the play here? I, I could, I could be scaling top floor. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill Diligent with a Rage Imp. Right? I mean, I, I am going to do that, actually. I think that is a true statement. Yep. Alright, well, we win. Imp Gang, rise up. That imp is doing how much damage on the back floor? 1,067. I mean, d tell me, is Consumer Crowns OP or, I don't know, is Transcend Imp OP? Hmm, I don't know, man. That imp hitting for 1,000. I took 15 damage. What a loser. What am I doing wrong? One thing I do have to be careful about, making sure I'm drawing my cards. <laughs> I only draw six cards, and I'm endlessing a lot of crap. Although, alternatively, you could just draw Transcendent on turn one, 
that is a nice way of playing it too. We're we're all on board with that. That's true. Do I even play the queen? I mean, yes, I should play the queen. Yeah, I mean, for sure, I play the queen. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, I don't know, do I actually play her? I think obviously I do. Some concern about survivability on top floor? I don't know. How are we feeling about this? Queen is useful before consumer crowns becomes useful. What if I just drop her, though, and then we go consumer imp queen zimpling here on middle and protect him with imp power? It's pretty good, actually, right? Because the imp in front tanks the whole wave. I think I do want to do that, actually. We do consumer middle, and then I do queen's impling. Although I have to be careful, right? The imp has to throw here. So then I do queen upstairs, and we use just implings to protect her, I suppose. True. I wish to tank, tank here. I will queen zimpling middle. I should take dark deal here. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think I'm all right with that. Yeah. Well, that looks good, huh? Looks reasonable. Now, I don't have any rage played yet. I can fix this, obviously. I would like to... Welder helper here. Upstairs. And then we fledgling imp upstairs for ember. Then I... Queen's impling middle. I come upstairs. I kill the welder helper. To draw nothing. And then I play a trample here. I actually think it's just superior to Queen's impling here. He gets a sleigh. And if you hit enough times, I don't need to trample, right? Yes, this is better. Right, and we just fortify here and it's okay, right? Because he gets a slay, which puts him at three now. True, and we get powered up a lot by the, what is it called? The queen, the transcendence will just nuke floors. Yeah, so here's the deal. I wish for Hallow Dripping's middle, first of all. Yes, I want to endless this Pyre Chomper, so I'm getting a little bit of extra value here. So we'll do endless Pyre Chomper upstairs. I have two space middle. I do Fledgling Imp upstairs. Cool. That's Hell's Banners. I now do Queen Zimpling middle. We kill on the floor now. One, two, three. Okay, good. I now tiresome climb the boss. I crushing demise downstairs. Fine. And then I just kill the dark wings outright here. Seems good. Cool. I think we stabilized now. Cool. We're using the transcendent for power here. I don't need to hold over anything else. I mean, at this point, I play one transcendent middle. Yeah, just the one. You're actually fledgling up upstairs first. Yeah. Just the one middle. Good. I get some two slays and then one bottom. Good. Fun. Sure, sure, sure. We're good. Uh, yeah. I navigated this. We are correct. And top floor is going to keep looking just peachy, I think. Wow, he has 18 HP. That is a multi-strike. That's good. Take that other one downstairs. Good. Play some imps. Sure, buds. 
We're fine. It's fine. We win this turn, right? Yeah. Transcend him, turns out, is pretty strong, huh? I mean, yeah, it's like you look at this. We're going to kill him with the Transcend Imp here. Yeah, I mean, he's he actually is just dead to Transcend him. Yeah, goodbye. I don't even get a chance to play anything cool, so we actually will just make it a little cooler here by sending it downstairs. 80. Got that 80 HP. I guess the queen gets the kill, huh? We can't let that happen. Get him Transcend Imp. All right. I mean, Transcend Imp is a good card, huh? True. They run kind of... I mean, the consumer was good, but I actually think he kind of played the way I wanted him to. He started slow. You saw I took 15 damage from Diligent do that. And then the Transcend Imps were really where the power of this run came from. So, yeah. Yeah. Fair, 61.8k, pretty strong. Pretty fast run too, one hour and five minutes, I'll take it. Yeah, let's hit the run summary. I have some things to talk through. So obviously there's a lot of good things here, right? The queen, she was fine. I think she actually contributed reasonably. She was clean up on divinity and actually mattered for a lot of other combats, but it really came down to Hell's Banners, Impsicle, Pyrestone housing, and then being, being well situated to perform the upgrades here right consumer was great he did great here he because of how effective i could ramp him early he helped the early game a lot and then laid waste to the mid game as well pretty good but transcendent took over very fast this once i hit this it was it was over, right? Oh my god, these numbers are nuts. At that point, you're putting out like 5,000 rage or something stupid, so it doesn't really matter. And I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh, buddy. Oh, I'm going to pause suddenly when that hits. I might have also just screwed myself and betrayed my own sneeze. But regardless, the rage scaling here with Transcendence was fun, but Transcendence eventually just kind of killed everything on their own. The votive key start was nice and secure. I like that. Tiresome climb is security. Important works. I was just drafting cards that killed my imps. Turns out the new sacrifice cards in Melting are really nice. Memories of the Melted. Yeah, I saw it. it says sacrifice. That's good for imp builds. I took impressive. I took important work. I took another important work. Just good cards that were smart into diligent and did their job elsewhere. Yeah, a pretty fun run. Consumer Crowns, he felt pretty decent. Like, he felt very strong in some combats and then kind of didn't matter all that much in others. The Transcendents in the end game were killing everything, though. They were, they were the winning line. But Consumer was still really strong, right? I mean, when you, get, when you have enough rage coming in from those Transcendents, this man's hitting, I don't know, 10 times and doing, I don't know, 400 damage or something stupid. I mean, on Diligent, I think he smacked for, like, an obscene amount. I think on Ring 7, he actually did the most. He was doing, what, 12,000 damage? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big number. It's a very big number. I'm interested in your thoughts here. I think if I'm comparing cards, Transcendence way stronger than Consumer. Is Consumer still too strong? I don't know. Transcendent, I think, is, in my opinion, immune to changes. He's This card is too core to the monster train experience. I don't think I'm ever changing Transcendent. I actually was the one who got them to nerf it to Ember in the first place, so I feel pretty strongly that was correct. But this thing is nuts. Just Transcendent in general is ridiculous. And I, I think, like I said, I think it's too core to the gameplay experience of Monster Train. You warp the entire game too much by removing this. And additionally, the entirety of Hellhorned Imp lines are balanced around the existence of this card. They want it to behave this way. I don't think you want to change Transcendent. I think that is an objectively bad decision for the game. Now, that card is nuts. Consumer's really good. 
especially in a deck that's able to make him much more playable. I have enough imps here, right, that he starts at one cost thanks to the imp cycle, which is very cool. The quick multi is a really good start as well. I mean, it puts his H his damage number in very good range. And I think he takes rage very well. So having the fledgling imp line was good. The extra plus 25 also valuable here. His stats are in a good place. I really like his ability. He's a lot of fun when he baseball bats. And I think that his ability is also extremely thematic, right? He consumes the crowns of his enemies. Everyone he kills, he gets significantly stronger. He should have the strongest slay trigger in this clan. And he does. But he's also big and hard to play. And we just happen to have a deck that had six imps walking into ring two. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I feel, I feel good about this. And the thing is, is, I feel good about this compared to other strong cards. He's a strong rare card. And you know what? Let me be real with you. He should be. Your rares should be good cards. They all should be game-defining, direction-giving cards. All of them. And that is an important goal of mine. I want every single rare banner unit to be an oh hell yeah moment when you play the clans. That is important. Consumer crowns is not that in the base game. This dude feels hype. I love playing him. And he is direction, right? You, your whole run becomes get him his first kill. And then that could be rage. That could be a lot of things. It could be, I don't know, imp. You eat imps, and then he gets a kill, and then you kind of go from there. It could be Pyrestone Housing with another multi-strike. Pretty cool. It could be quick to save his HP, which is what we did here. It could be all of the above, because Pyrestone Housing, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I really liked the way this played. And yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I think I like this unit a lot. I, I really strongly believe that this is satisfying and... He's really strong, but I don't think he's that nutty. The, the The real things you need to look at here and be like, what's nutty is, I mean, transcend him. This trivialized the late game. I think he actually might have, we might have leaked more. We might have had some more trouble if I hadn't been for that transcend him hit. But we had a good deck anyway, right? We just had all the things we needed. So I don't know. I think I'll leave it at that. It brings us up to two on the series, which is pretty cool. Or I guess it's actually three. Did we win with Rector? We did. That was Wilting Sapwood, right? We did. So I'm actually at a three win streak. How cool. Look at me. The number is greater than zero. Awesome. And yeah, I think that's all I got for you. So hey, thanks a ton for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.